come church, let's make a declaration this morning. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Because it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible.
We believe in you, we believe in you, Jesus. Every promise of your word, we believe in you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Come on, church, we want to welcome you this morning as we go to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And every song this morning is going to be a declaration of faith where you can declare and proclaim your trust in the Lord. We know this has been a difficult season, but we know one thing, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is still a God that is good. And I want you right in your home this morning to lift your hands just to worship Him, to give Him the glory, give Him the praise, and give Him the honor. Allow His presence to invade your situation. Father, we thank You this morning that we worship the God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we're going to declare it this morning that You are the God that is lifted up and seated in heavenly places. You are a God that is victorious. You're a God that is always good. You're a God that is holy. You're a God that does not change. And Father, this morning, God, I just pray for your people, your precious, precious bride. As we lift up your name this morning, I pray that your presence would invade their living rooms. Your presence would invade wherever they, wherever they are gathered this morning. And Father, I pray and I declare that situations will turn around, that the impossible will become possible. That sickness will bow its knee. That, that chains will be broken this morning as we worship you. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah.
should this life bring suffering? Lord, I will remember yeah. what Calvary has bought for me, both now.
this morning. Jesus, oh, He reigns with healing in His ways. The King above all kings. Oh 
no other name Jesus Christ our God The earth will shake The earth will shake And tremble before Him Chains will break As heaven and earth Hallelujah. I want to greet you in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Yet another time we could come to hear what God has to say. And I believe we have a word from the Lord this morning, and I believe God's going to speak to you. I believe that it's important that we connect to what God is doing. We need to come with receptive hearts. We need to come with enthusiasm when it comes to the word of the Lord. And friends, at these times, if there ever was a time and a season, it's now that we have to really tune in and plug into what God is saying. With so many different voices and so many different things that are happening, we need to hear what God is saying at this present season, in this time. Um, we need to be so tuned in to the voice of God. And so I want to encourage you, just get your families together and, and just listen to what God is saying. I know we miss our fellowship, we miss our times together, we miss being in a church corporate set, setting with corporate worship and that kind of atmosphere. And I know soon church will open again that we can have that kind of experience. But we must never now think that because we're not having that type of setup that we should somehow lessen our worship or lessen the way we serve God. So I want to encourage you today, just get into the Word of God, get into what God is saying. And I want to just pray and God will just speak to us even this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord God, that you're a God who hears us. Thank you that you're a God that have, has given us your word, that you've unfolded your plan and your purpose, Lord, even through 
your beautiful word, which is a love letter to mankind. That is through your word that we are somehow to decode your heart. We can sense what you are saying to us. It is through your word that we find our identity. We discover, Lord God, how loved we are. We discover, Lord, that, Father, you had a plan from the very very um, inception, from the very beginning of time, Lord God, even before the foundations of the earth began, Lord God, that you, the timeless one, had a plan and purpose for mankind. I thank you, Lord God. I pray that you will speak to us, Lord God. We are ready to listen. We are ready for your voice. Amen. Friends, I want to talk to you on the topic, the power of love. The power of love. I know today is Valentine's Day and people are pledging their love one to another. People will send cards and all types of greetings and messages to one another, electronic messages and so forth, and buying elaborate gifts. And, and it's Valentine's Day, both young and old, that celebrate this time. But I believe that this is time where we need to focus on the lover of our soul. We need to focus on the one that demonstrated his love in a tangible way. You know, I think of the song by Huey Lewis and even Jennifer Rush, two different songs with the same title, The Power of Love. And I was thinking about that those are songs that talk about uh, the love one has for another, love between man, a man and a woman, not the love of God. And, 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 and here is them through this art of music and through this beautiful display of, of song showcasing love one to another, but it is nothing compared to the love of God. It is nothing that compared to the magnificence and the magnitude of the love of God, the lover of our soul. C.S. Lewis said it this way, the Christian does not think God will love us because we are good, but that God will make us good because He loves us. And that's the, the difference here when we try to see how God would take mankind, uh, even with all His shortcomings and His weaknesses, and transform that which is nothing into something. And today, I want you to just focus on this God that loves you so much. My first point is this, is that God's love for His people is a fire that cannot be quenched. The Song of Solomon's 8 verse 7 says it this way, Many waters cannot quench the flame of fire, neither can floods drown it. If a man tried to buy it with everything he owned, he couldn't. There is nothing that can quench this fire. There's, even the floods cannot drown it. It's a fire, it's a flame that is so powerful that nothing can douse it. Nothing can extinguish it. That's the, the love that God has for you and me. When we ponder on the magnificence of this love and that it cannot be measured, that it's a love that cannot be described. It's a love that's beyond human comprehension. It's a love that you and I need to experience. That no trial, no tribulation, that even your anger or your tantrums, uh, absolutely nothing can separate you from this love. Your unfaithfulness, the, this love is immutable, in other words, unchangeable. That He is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Do you believe today that God loves you? Have you experienced the power of love? Have you been, uh, has it grabbed you? Has it taken a hold of you? Has it in some way transformed you from the inside out? This love cannot be extinguished. I read a quotation even uh, uh, that, that's so powerful. And it says, though we are incomplete, God loves us completely. Though we are imperfect, He loves us perfectly. Though we may be lost and without compass, God's love encompasses us completely. He loves every one of us, even those who are flawed, rejected, awkward, sorrowful, and broken. He loves us in our incomplete, in our imperfect, awkward, broken state. He loves us. He's willing to take that which is incomplete and make it complete. 
that which is imperfect and make it perfect. My next point is this, is that God's love is inexhaustible in its flow of supply. There's always a supply. There's always a channel. There's, it's inexhaustible. It can never in any way stop His inexhaustible, immeasurable love that's poured out to you and to me. In Romans 8 verse 32, it says, He who did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? Let's stop right there. He did not even spare His beloved Son in whom He was well pleased that He was willing even to give us His very best to demonstrate His love. It says, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. What is God's elect? It comes from the Greek word electos, which means selected. It means favorite, chosen. You are his favorite. You are chosen by him. He's handpicked you. It is God who justifies. It is God who declares righteous. As if you've never sinned, he cleans the slate gives you a new beginning. He gives you a new start. Who can bring a charge against God's chosen, God's favorite, God's elect? Who is he who condemns? And I was looking at that word condemn. And it means to judge against, to sentence, to damn. Who can do that? Who can judge and condemn? It is Christ who died and furthermore is risen and is at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us. God says, I've declared you righteous. I've called you. I've chosen you. Who in their right mind has the audacity to come against you? Who in their right mind can bring a charge against you? Who in their right mind has the audacity To label you. I'm making intercession. I am pleading your cause to the Father. And that is why who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Not even tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. Nothing. In verse 37 it says, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Why? Through Him who loved us. The power of love. That... that, This love that that the entire gospel, all of scripture could be summed up in one word and that is love. His love for mankind, for his children. I love the song that that is so popular these days. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. It chases me down. It fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Look at that love. Do you you feel it today? Have you been infused with the love of God? Do you meditate on the love of God? Has it captivated you? Is your soul enraptured and captured by the love of God? And in these times when so much is happening, where people's hearts are broken, People are wondering, do I have a job tomorrow? People are scared. I tell you, it is in these moments that we must be rooted and grounded in the love of God. See, when you understand how much God loves you, you trust Him for whatever the outcome is. And I don't know about you, but I prayed for things that, that God answered instantaneously. And there were some things I prayed about that, that, that it just, I found God was either delaying the answer or He didn't answer the way I thought He would answer. But I need to trust in His love. I need to be rooted and grounded in His love, knowing that He has, He cares about me. He loves me. Francis de Sales says it this way. When did God's love for you begin? When he began to be God. When did he begin to be God? Never. For he has always been without beginning and without end. And so he has always loved you from eternity. 
Think about that. This God who caused everything that He Himself is uncaused, timeless, no beginning, no end, has loved you from all eternity. I mentioned in the beginning that the love of, 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 of man and woman, you know, it is, sometimes it will fail. You know, I remember years ago doing a wedding and, and I knew this couple were not ready to get married and, and I knew that they were not spiritually and emotionally and mentally, but they were just, we are in love, we want to get married, pastor, you have to get us married. And I, and, and I knew and I told them, I don't think you should get married just yet. Maybe go for more counseling, but they insisted. And I know that they splashed out hundreds of thousands of rands that they didn't have, that they had to borrow. And only in months after that, they literally tried to kill each other. They, they, it ended up into an ugly, horrible divorce. And we look at how fickle human love can be. How frail it can be. But this love that God has far supersedes and exceeds the love of man. Greater love is no man than he would lay down his life for his friends. The Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. This is the love of God. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ. It's not I that live, but Christ lives in me. And I know that he loves me. You see, it's so important for us to be settled and fixed in the love of God. He's loved you from eternity. Give him your very best because he did not spare his own son. Who can judge you? Who can bring a case against you? You are God's elect, God's chosen, God's favorite. You see, God's mercy and grace is the ultimate expression of God's love for us. His mercy. You know, the Bible says His mercies are new every single morning. It's because of His mercies that we are not consumed. If God would regard all the sin or iniquity that we have, who would stand? But it's because of His mercy. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 4, But God so rich, what? In mercy has loved us so much. Look at the superlatives. Look at what the text is saying. That he's rich. What is he rich in? He's rich in mercy. And his mercy and his grace. It is the ultimate expression of his love for us. That he didn't just love us. He loved us so much. You can see that Paul is even struggling to find words to express this love that God has for you and I, and I. That even though we were spiritually dead and doomed by our sins, He gave us back our lives again. Come on, somebody. He gave us back our lives. We were doomed. We were sons of disobedience. We were sons of wrath. We were messed up, heading to a Christless eternity. We were doomed in our sins. But He gave us his life back again. Is there anybody that can say, I thank God that He gave me my life back again? That even though I, it seemed as if I could not be redeemed or ransomed, He sent His only Son. And it says He gave us his, uh, our lives back again when He raised Christ from the dead. Only by His undeserved favor have we been saved. What is His undeserved, unearned favor? That's His grace. It's by grace You've been saved, not because of your works. And sometimes you may be feeling, maybe I've, I've earned God's mercy. I've earned God's grace. Uh, I've done so many good things. I've always cared for the poor. I've always been frontline to help the destitute. I've been faithful to church. I've been fasting and prayer. You cannot earn God's grace. You cannot earn God's mercy. He is freely pouring out His grace and mercy even this morning. It says he lifted us up from the grave into glory. Does anybody here can say, I was dead in my sins. He lifted me up from the miry claim, from the dirt. And he glorified me into a glory along with Christ. 
that we sit now with Jesus Christ in heavenly places all because of what Jesus did. Why is this important, friends? We need to ponder and soak ourselves and bask ourselves in the love of God and realize how deeply He loves us. Because when chaos comes and uncertain times comes and we're living in the midst of a pandemic and people can't predict what's going to happen or forecast this week or next week and, and know what's going to happen. When's the next pandemic? When's the next earthquake? And what's happening with our economy? You and I need to realize that we can feel a sense of peace, a sense of tranquility. Why? We are loved by God. The Bible says He will give beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. There are many people that have really gone through difficult, difficult times. Even losing loved ones. I want you to know today, He will give you beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. I feel somebody needs to hear this today prophetically, that you will rise again. Oh yes, and when you're going to rise this time, you're going to rise stronger. You're going to rise more focused, no matter how badly you were knocked down. Because you are loved by God. Because you are settled and fixed in His love. Because you are so cognizant of the fact that He loves you. That, he, that the Bible says, our famous verse, He loved us, He gave His only begotten Son. You will rise again. Somebody needs to hear this today. You may be downtrodden. Your business may be uh, tattered and torn. And you may be feeling, how will it ever rise? I want you to know today, you will rise again. You will be prosperous. You will be successful. You will be established. God will heal you. God will carry you. You will begin again. He is the God of new beginnings. A new chapter. Somebody once said that Satan loves to take what is beautiful and ruin it. God loves to take what is ruined and make it beautiful. That's God. Oh, you may be saying, I'm ruined. I'm struggling. Pastor, you don't know I'm struggling. I'm not happy. My prayer life is just right down. I don't read God's word anymore. I don't even know if I'm in the faith anymore. And you may be feeling ruined and God can take you in your ruined state and make something beautiful. He makes all things beautiful in His time. Somebody needs to hear this this morning, that everything you lost will be restored, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Like God said to David when he was at Ziglag, and they were mourning over the loss of their wives and children. God says, pursue the enemy. You will overtake, and you'll recover all. Our next point is that we must meditate on God's love for us so that we can be delivered from fear. People are scared. People can't sleep. People can't sit and just be in a relaxed state. Their minds are erratic. There's, there's, there's thoughts coming in, going out. Their bodies are feeling the anguish of a mind that is not settled. Stomach ulcers and all types of, 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 of diseases that have crept in because of fear. But fear is not of God. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 1 John 4 verse 16 says, And we have known, listen to this, we have known means that we've personally experienced this and believed the love of God for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. We, we, we've tasted of this love. 
we've had a real relationship, an intimate relationship. We've believed in this love. We've known this love, that this God is the embodiment of love. And if you abide in the love of God, you abide in God and God abides in you. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because He is, so are we in this world. Many people are wondering what's going to happen to me. They have this picture of God where they are traumatized when they think about God, that God is there, this big righteous judge with a shambok waiting to knock me down, that God is there waiting to just pounce on my sin and, and just give me a hard time and make my life more difficult. No, love has been perfected. It's because of that, we are rooted in His love. We can have boldness even on the day of judgment. Why? Because we are rooted in His love. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made, been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Let's, let's understand that and let's tackle what this text is saying to us today. That when you know the love of God, when you believe in the love of God, when you understand that He loves you so much that He wants what's best for you, His thoughts of you are amazing thoughts, good thoughts, beautiful thoughts, thoughts of hope and of a future. He's got a bright future for you. When you realize how much He loves you, there shouldn't be fear. Are you hearing me today? There, there shouldn't be fear of the future. There shouldn't be fear. I'm not going to have any money tomorrow. My children are not going to have school fees. They're not going to have enough money to do what they need to do. They shouldn't be fear of the future, fear of dread, fear of the day of judgment. It says, if, if, if you, you've not been perfected by this love, you're going to be terrified and tormented because you've not been perfected by this love. And this love of God, it'll cast out fear. When you are settled and fixed in the love of God, grounded and rooted, fear has to go. That now you realize, God, why am I living my life always scared? Why am I living my life always worried about what they think of me? Why do I live my life tormented by people, afraid of insignificant things? I love what one translation says, we know how much God loves us because we have felt His love. Because we believe Him when He tells us that He loves us dearly. Do you believe it? That's an important point. Do you believe that when God's Word says that He loves you, do you believe it? There are so many promises in Scripture, but do you believe it? Is it just a theory? Is it just an ideology? Are you really a person who trusts God's Word and His promises that you believe that He loves you dearly. God is love. And anyone who lives in His love is living with God. You want to live with God? You want God to live in you? Focus on His love. Focus on how much He cares about you. This Valentine's Day, like I said, people will be exchanging roses and, and the entire city will be painted red. But you know, when you think of red and you think of love, you think of the blood of Jesus. It's His precious blood shed for you and me that was, shows us how much He loves us. The Bible says, and we live with Christ, our love grows more perfect and complete. In other words, you and I have to grow in this love, develop in this love. It's important that as we grow in Christ, there should be a maturity. There should be a stability. There should be a, a peace about us because we know we are living in the love of God and God is living in us. 
It says we don't have to be ashamed of embarrassed on the day of judgment, but can face Him with confidence and joy because He loves us and we love Him too. He loves us. We need have no fear of someone who loves us perfectly. His perfect love for us eliminates all dread of what He might do to us. If we are afraid, it is for fear of what He might do to us and shows that we are not fully convinced that He really loves us. So you see, our love for Him comes from a result of His loving us first. This is so beautiful, yet it is so powerful, so powerful that the love of God eliminates all dread, all fear, all embarrassment. We're not afraid anymore. We are fully persuaded and convinced that we are loved by God. The message translation in Jeremiah 31 verse 3 says, God out looking for them, God told them, I've never quit loving you and never will. Expect love, love and more love. This is God speaking. He says, I've never quit loving you. Right now, there's no need for you to, to be troubled. There's no need for you to be perplexed. There's no need for you to be riddled with fear. If you allow God to come into your life, if you surrender your life to Him, if you believe that He died and rose again and has a good plan for you, that fear will be completely eliminated. That now on the inside of you is nothing else but God and His love. Expect love, love and more love. He'll never, ever quit loving you. Friends, we must be rooted and grounded in the love of God that we may be filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Rooted and grounded. We heard those words before in the sermon. In the love of God. Why? That we may be filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. In other words, all of God living in me. Full to the point, you know, when a cup is overflowing. Not just full to the top, but overflowing. We need to be overflowing with the fullness of God. Ephesians 3 verse 17 says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. This is powerful. How does he dwell? Through faith. Through faith he dwells in our heart. It says that we need to comprehend all dimensions, the extravagant love of God that there's no measuring tape. There's no way to calculate this infinite love of God. It says that you may be able to comprehend the width, the height, the depth, that there's no way it is so vast. And we can spend all of our life trying to understand this love, but it's like a drop in the ocean. How vast is love? This love which passes knowledge. Why? It's important to know this love and to experience His love. It's only when you are rooted and grounded in this love that it says you can be filled with all the fullness of God. One translation says, endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. This extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. I don't know about you, but I want to be filled with more of God. If you don't experience the love of God, if you don't meditate on the love of God, you will never truly experience the presence of God, the anointing of God, the fullness of God. You see, when you know that God loves you, you always trust God for the outcome. You're not afraid of what tomorrow brings. You know that, yes, Man may be unpredictable, he can like you today and tomorrow he can hate you, but you're not afraid of all those things. You're not afraid of sickness, you're not afraid of um, 
financial issues, whatever that may be, because you know that God loves you, you experience the power of His love. So somehow fear is cast out. It's not there anymore. It's God who loves you. He died for you and me. He demonstrated His love. By dying for you and me. Friends, I want to encourage you today. No matter how bad things are. You may have had a very difficult few days. Or or the last few months have been probably the most torrid time that you've ever experienced. But today. Let your heart be so at peace to know. That the God you serve is a God who is able to complete you. Is a God who is able to heal you. Is a God who cares about you. Hallelujah. 1 John 3 verse 16 says, By this we know love, because He laid down His life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. He's interceding for you and for me. Gives us the Holy Spirit to comfort us so that we, the love of God can be shed abroad in our hearts. How? Through the Holy Spirit. Have a strong, real relationship with the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? He is God. He's not an active force. He's not something spooky. The Holy Spirit is God. And as you relate to the Holy Spirit and cultivate that intimacy with God, all fear has to die. All worry, all anxiety has to die. I want to pray for you today. I want to encourage you. Don't quit. Because His love never quits. His reckless love. His all-consuming love. His amazing love for you today. Father, I pray for your people even this morning that may be going through a storm, Lord God. I pray for those, Lord God, that feel unloved, Lord. Maybe even for those that have gone through abuse and that have been victimized, Lord God. And that, Father, find it hard to accept love. Because of what they've experienced, they they just struggle to even uh, accept the fact that you love them, Lord God. That nothing can separate them from your love, Father. That you love them with an everlasting love, Lord God. That, Lord, you will heal them, restore them. That, Father, they will be captivated by your love. We pray, Lord God. I pray that you will touch your people as they are watching this broadcast, Lord God. That, Lord God, they will know, Lord Jesus, you can rescue them. That, Lord, all that they need is to trust in you, to have faith in you. That, Father, you can set them free. They don't have to live in fear. They don't have to live in dread. They don't have to live in turmoil. Father, I pray the peace of God, the power of God, the anointing of God to break every yoke of bondage, Father. That, Lord God, they will rise up from the ashes, Lord God. They will rise up and, Lord, uh, live to serve you, Lord. Live to love you because you have loved them first. They will rise up, Lord, and realize that they are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Uh, I pray that today you will rise up uh, and receive your God given identity, that you're a son of God, you're a daughter of God, you are God's elect, you are God's favorite. Who can bring a charge against you? Who can bring a charge against God's elect and God's favorite? Who can judge you? Who can condemn you? Who can damn you? God, Jesus Christ died for you. He's declared you righteous. You need to declare today, I am justified by the grace of God. I am declared righteous. I am sanctified, I'm set apart, I'm purified, I'm called by God. Nothing can by any means harm me or hurt me because God loves me. I pray you'll experience that love. And I pray that if you don't know Jesus Christ and His love, accept Him this morning as Lord and Savior. Say, come into my heart, God. Make me brand new, Lord. Turn my life around. I believe you died and you rose again. 
Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on me. His mercies are new every morning. If you said that prayer, please, the details will be on the screen. And contact us that we can give you more information. Can we receive the benediction to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God, our Savior, be blessing, glory, majesty, and power through Jesus Christ, our Lord before all ages, both now and forevermore. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you and God be with you.